So a video on critical path analysis. We're going to finish it off with latest starting time. So this is a weighted activity network, and I've already done two things. I did some forward scanning to find earliest starting times, and then I did backward scanning to find latest finishing times. Now, all of this is great, and I can find the critical path using this, but what I also need to find is latest starting times. Because if you imagine all of these activities as people, I can say to them, you have to get here at 11 a.m. because you have to start work on this. At the very latest, you better be here at 1 p.m. because you need to lay the bricks so that the next person can be here at 4 p.m. to do this job. Really important in project management. All right, uh, let's do our latest starting time. We're going to get started by creating a table. So here we have our table, activity A all the way down to H. Duration, earliest starting time, latest finishing time, latest starting time. Uh, okay, now the duration bit's really straightforward. You don't need to watch me do that. A is going to take eight hours, B is going to take six, C is going to take one, D is going to take two, three, one, two, and one. All right, they're the durations. Now, what about earliest starting times? Well, we've already calculated all of those. Here, 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 the left-hand side boxes tell us the earliest starting times for the activities. Now, you need to be careful here because A and B have the earliest starting time of that number there. C has the earliest starting time of that one. So it's the box that precedes the activity, the vertex before it. All right, let's fill that in. All right, so, so far so good. These are the earliest that these activities are allowed to start, and we did it by filling in those left-hand side boxes. Now, what about latest finishing time? These are the latest that the activities are allowed to end. And I just want to take a moment here because I don't want to get confused. So I'm going to start from the bottom, which feels non-standard, but it'll make sense in a second. We found latest for, um, finishing times by backward scanning, and I'm going to do the same here. H's latest finishing time is this thing here. That's when the project's going to finish, and H is the last thing to do in the project. So it's 15. So whereas when I did the earlier starting times, I was using the box before the letter here, for H, when I'm doing latest finishing times, I'm using the box after the letter, here. Okay, so you need to be really careful with that. All right, G, uh, G's latest finishing time is in the box after G, and its latest finishing time is 14. And we can continue like that. So F's uh, latest finishing time, F's latest finishing time is here, and so is E's latest finishing time. So 12 and 12. D's latest finishing time, D's latest finishing time is here, 11. C's latest finishing time is here, 9. B's latest finishing time is here, 9. And A's latest finishing time is here, 8. Okay, and what about our last column here? Latest starting times. Latest starting times is the most important part of this whole critical path analysis because we're saying, right, this is the latest that this job can get started. If it gets started any later than this, the job won't get done on time. Now, I've written in a little formula for you up here. The latest starting time is equal to the latest finishing time minus the duration of the activity. Now, that should make perfect sense, right? Because the latest finishing time of job H is 15. The time it takes to do H is one hour. So that means that the latest that H can start and have us finish on time is 15 minus one, which is 14. The latest that G can start. So G's latest finishing time is 14. It's gonna take two hours to do the job. So 14 minus two equals 12. G had better start at the 12 hour mark or we're not going to get this done on time. Uh, right, F. What about F? Let's see. The latest finishing time for F is 12 hours. It takes one hour to do F, so we'd better start it at 12 minus 1, which is at the 11 hour mark. And you can see that that's our little bit of slack time here, right? We said that, that could start a little bit later. We got a little bit of slack time there. Okay, uh, 12 minus 3 equals 9. That's when we better start E. 
11 minus 2 equals 9. That's when we better start D, the latest we can start D. Um, 9 minus 1 equals 8. That's the latest that we can start C and still get this done on time. 9 minus 6, that's the 3 hour mark. That's the latest that we can start B and still get this done on time. And if you look here, you should be able to see that without creating a table, right? Because the latest time is 6, B takes 6 hours, and we're going to do 3. That's the latest we can start. Okay, uh, and finally, uh, 8 minus 8 equals 0. We had better start A as soon as the whistle blows, because if we don't start A, there's going to be a problem. It's got to start right on time. Okay, that table here is really, really important for a person called a project manager because they are telling all of these different activities when they need to appear, say, on the job site. Let's say you're building a house and all of these are all the individual things you need to do to build a house. You're telling them, get here on this time or this thing's not going to get done on time. Get here at this time. The latest that you can get here is this time and so on and so on. Okay, so that is critical path analysis. That table there calculates our latest starting times, which in the real world is the thing that really matters.